well, first of all, how did we ever let this happen in the first place? And second of all, uh, would we do a thing like this ourselves? Do we know people who might? How would we prevent uh, such actions from occurring if we're aware of them? Uh, how we can develop a greater sense of community responsibility? How we can balance our need for self-realization uh, with the need to be um, aware of other people and helping them? And uh, I, I saw a lot of positive energy being um, generated by the discussions that went on. I felt personally a little bit restrained by the idea that one person would have five minutes in which to speak and another person would have five minutes in which to speak, because that isn't normally the way in which conversations occur. Uh, but I also recognized that it was important that every person feel valued, and if this was a means of increasing the likelihood that they would be respected and their ideas would be heard, uh, I was willing to cooperate with it. Um, one of the things that I heard was that I thought was really interesting was um, a young mother said she wondered why it took this case to happen and, and all the publicity and everything around it, why it took that for us to have conversations like this, to have conversations about educating our children about sexuality and about things they ought to be, um, to, they ought to know in order to protect themselves. And she said she never really thought about how necessary it was to have these conversations early. And um, so I think we're, she was kind of amazed and all of us were saying, yeah, we're surprised it, it has to take something like this to shake us up. Well, I think in school, um, a lot of kids don't understand what actually is happening and what did happen. And they kind of, I think, turn a blind eye to it and think, because Penn State is such a big part of our community, that they don't want to address what actually happened. And they want to make sure that Penn State is still close to their hearts and that the Sinusky scandal didn't isn't relevant to them. I don't feel like we can move on yet because there hasn't been real action that's been taken and I feel like a lot of people still feel like they're not empowered and that there needs to be a way for the community to talk and the community to heal before they can move on. Um, just like was shared at closing, there is still so much anger and so much that we don't know that it's been pushed aside to some degree, but it's still there. There's still this sort of undercurrent of this whole community was lied to and this whole community was manipulated and there hasn't been a way for the community to address that yet. And that there needs to be some sort of, like I said, action before people can move on. And that something like this is a great place to start that action. Um, the feeling of peace at the end was very prominent. Uh, the World Cafe gave me like the reaction that a lot of community members um, are encouraged by my thoughts and as a youth I can um, make people believe or help encourage uh, talk about the issues that are happening. There's always lots to learn and um, you know it was a great learning experience and also I got an opportunity to uh, share some of my thoughts and ideas and, and felt valued about that and uh, and it was um, a great opportunity to also meet people uh, from all different disciplines and all from d different backgrounds and um, and um, you know so there were some thoughts uh, there were some uh, issues that um, we were all uh, uh, you know, we were all thinking about that in me. There were a lot of similarities, but then there were some different issues that they touched upon, which I did not, I was not aware of. So, um, yeah, it was a great learning experience for me, and so I could uh, 
carry this with me and uh, uh, apply them in the work that I'm doing. You know. It's very interesting. Um, I've learned a great deal already. There's three of us at my table, and um, it's really interesting because at my table I have a teenager and someone who's retired, and then myself. So it's like three different generations, and I'm getting different impressions from each generation, and it's really quite interesting uh, what the dialogue has been, and I think um, this process is a really good way to understand the problem of childhood sexual abuse and, and the finding ways to um, combat it. Well, I think what was fascinating is that this, there are so many people who think alike about the issue that, that we need to talk about it, you know, come together on it, be more involved, bring the community together, and uh, there's a lot of like-minded thoughts on the subject, and that's an encouraging thing, but we just need to expand that. If you could increase the number of people that are involved, that this can build on another thing, then then perhaps, yeah. Because it's anything, everything is about communication. So if we can communicate with each other, and then things can be solved. So I guess um, I'll, the the reason that I would I would be I'm interested in this topic. One, I'm a parent. I I, I have three daughters. I have a teenager still in high school. Um, I do teach high school, and um, this specific it, issue topic, I had a daughter that went, went to the second mile, um, but never saw, you know, Mr. Sandusky um, um, or any really Penn State wasn't involved in it at all. So that was sort of a curious thing how it seems to become into a Penn State issue when I don't think that it was. But then also. Um, you know, just trying to get information out because since I do teach high school, you know, the kids uh, need to understand, um, you know, how how that could happen to other kids instead of them being so harsh and wanting to to their way of dealing with it was making fun of kids that it might have happened to, and not realizing, you know, how it could happen to anybody, and you know how to be aware of it and what what you know so they think they know how they would handle it, but you know, really being able to talk about ways that you could really handle it. I think the, the community cafe experience is is and was valuable for me uh, from the standpoint of opening a dialogue uh, around an issue that has hit home to a lot of us. Um, one of the things that uh, I personally felt, uh, this changed my opinion about this a little bit, is the fact that I felt like we missed the opportunity to really learn from what really occurred and I think the dialogue was so much around Penn State as a, as a university and Penn State as a football community as opposed to the crimes that Jerry Sandusky had committed and how do we learn from what happened and prevent that from happening or try to deal with it in a better sense and I think uh, our world community kind of lost that. I think it became about money, it became about power, it became about um, the university as opposed to who actually did this. And so I, I, this dialogue in this format really helps us, help me understand that maybe it wasn't all lost. Maybe there is a, a, a momentum being built to move us forward as a community and to be able to learn as a community as a whole. Um, and, and that's important. I think education is critical. I think um, finding out what happened, um, not just in the university, but what happened as a whole. I think there's a lot of unanswered questions. And I think some of the questions aren't being asked yet, but I think dialogues like this will help those questions to be asked um, beyond just the scope of what happened at Penn State. So thank you. I think it just hurt people. And it hurt them collectively and it hurt them individually. I teach, I teach at the university and one thing I remember most of my students expressing was anger that there's been such a broad brush stroke that, you know, this is Penn State and there hasn't been focused on the individual who was the perpetrator and that the students feel a lot of anger 
And the media has just continued that, that there hasn't been a calming element at this time. I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic and excited to see about what else we can do if, if we incorporate the World Cafe into a broader spectrum, not just at the UU, but also around all of State College and even the nation, hopefully, to eventually bring more awareness to child sexual abuse and how to prevent it. I, I I think we have to give ourselves the time, uh, engage in more such conversations, and so that uh, invest actually our time in this and make it a priority. If you want to come to any kind of solution, you have to put in the time and the effort. And, and I think it's, uh, it's for a very, very good cause. It's because of for our children and they are a future. And, and as parents, most parents want their children to be happy and safe, and so, but they are so caught up in their, you know, everyday life that um, it's difficult to make time for some of these difficult issues. So, but, um, you know, like slowly, you know, we can gather up people and have these conversations and, and you know, like they say, Many drops of water make a mighty ocean, you know, it's like, yeah, we have to slowly, we, the important thing is we need to have the faith that we are able to do, we are capable of doing that, and, and I believe so, we all have the ability, it's just, you know, um, it's just a matter of commitment, we commit, our, commit ourselves to, um, to this issue, then I'm sure we'll be able to achieve and accomplish something, you know, and I feel very uh, positive about this.